Hey, what up guys? Johnny here. Uh, today I want to take you through my latest quadcopter build. A ZMR250? Alright, so I know what you're probably asking, why would you build a ZMR250 these days? Um, for me, I think it's important to remember that I'm brand new to this hobby. You know, I just started flying these, these racing quads about, you know, two months ago or so. I started around November. Um, so for me, I missed a lot of the history. You know, I didn't fly what people were flying a year or two ago, and everybody seemingly used to fly a ZMR250. And I know that people stop building them because they're not as good or they're garbage, they're crap, they're whatever. But I had no understanding of why that was. Um, seeing as you can buy one really cheap, I mean, this one I paid $30 for, but I've seen them around for as little as $12, $13, $14. Um, I figured it was worth investing in those parts, building something, trying to fly it, and see if I can tell the difference between that and my... QAV uh, 210 clone or maybe something else that I'll build in the future. I figured I could always strip the parts off later, but then I will have given myself a little bit of an education in quad flying. All right, so I, I want to take you through, you know, the components that I used here and, and how I built this and kind of my thinking and, and how I build it. So first, obviously, is the frame. It, it's the ZMR250 like we already talked about. Um, you'll notice I don't have the little rubber mount for the GoPro camera. Um, I have it right here, but the thing is, I hate this thing. Um, any small crash seems to knock one of these little rubber things out of the little holes. Um, once it happens, it's a nightmare to get it back in. The new ones don't have this, so I don't want it. All right, so as you can see, I ended up just putting the, the piece of foam on the top here like you do with the other quad. That works too. Um, in theory, it's not going to be a smooth video, but honestly, this works pretty well, too. All right, so for the core of the build, I wanted to do basically the same setup that I have in my other quad. I wanted to use the same flight controller. I wanted to use the same PDB. I didn't want any differences there. So I'm flying with the SP Racing F3 Evo flight controller here um, using a special PDB. Uh, one thing that was kind of nice is the PDB actually fits fully between these two different standoffs. On my QAV210, it didn't quite fit. I had to leave two of the standoffs off. This, in theory, gave me a little bit more stability for the top plate. I definitely appreciated that. Um, moving on, I'm using uh, Little B 20 amp ESCs, the same ESCs that I'm actually running on my QAV210. That should give me similar performance as well. Really breaking down the differences between this frame and that frame. Moving on to the motors, I'm not quite running the same motors on this one as I am on the other frame. Uh, this is this is also the Emax 2205 motors, but this is the 2300 kV motor versus the 2600 kV motor. So for the props, I decided to try out the Dow 5040 Tri-Blade V2. So far, I really, really, really like these uh, props. I'm probably going to go and put these on my other quad too. I, I'm really enjoying these. Moving to the back, I forget the exact video transmitter, but it's also a 600 milliwatt transmitter, uh, which matches the other one. And then I'm running a TBS Triumph antenna on the back uh, for my video transmitter. I've actually also switched to the same one on my uh, 210 quad. The old one was starting to get cut up on the antenna and that was causing some fuzziness in the transmission. So switching to these antennas really cleared things up in that video, which has been really nice. In the back, I'm using the same uh, receiver. It's the XSR receiver, the FrySky uh, receiver. This is working great. Um, I've seen no difference between this one and the one that's in the other. They're the, both the same receiver. Lastly, the camera that I'm flying here. This is a 2.5 millimeter lens on an OWL Plus. 
Um, the owl looks really, really interesting to me. I like the idea of being able to fly, you know, in the dark, basically. Um, I did a little bit of test flights in the backyard with just a little bit of floodlights, and I was amazed that I could still make it around the backyard without too much issue. Uh, this thing's really, really impressive when it comes to night flying. However, I've also learned it's really not so impressive during the day. Um, I haven't spent too much time trying to nail down exactly what settings to use if I'm trying to do day flying, but as it is pretty much stock, you got to be careful. The ground can become blacked out very easily. You can get disoriented as far as your height goes. Um, I found myself being less aggressive when I'm flying with this versus the other one. Um, it's still doable, but it's just really not that pretty to look up during the day. Um, even if you're not looking at the ground and bright uh, sky or overcast sky at the same time, just the colors are not very pleasant to look at. Um, I really think I could tweak this to get something a little bit better, but you know, I mean, I just, why, why really bother? I love it at night. It makes a ton of sense to fly with this at night. Maybe use the other one during the day and maybe that's a good, you know, balance. I, I do want to talk about the experience in building this thing. Um, I actually found this pretty frustrating. Um, on the nice side, it, it's a big frame. There's lots of room. There's tons of empty space. I can get in here with my fingers. I can kind of whittle things around. I can press buttons. You know, I can get in here and add my little OSD controller for the camera if I need to. I can unplug the camera. In those ways, it's really, really nice and really easy. You know, especially during my, especially comparing it to my, you know, 130 millimeter quad. However, the thing that was really hard for me and somehow I kept forgetting to deal with it is these bottom plates here. They actually have two uh, layers and a lot of the bolts or a lot of the screws actually go in between the two layers. And the way I like to build them is I like to put the arms on, see how it goes, attach the motors, put on the ESCs. Um, but once I did that first, I then went to attach my PDB. But I can't get to my PDB because the screws don't go on the bottom. So to take everything apart, put the PDB on, put the bottom plate back on. So I went through, reattached the arms, put the motors back on there. All right. And now I want to do the camera. Same thing again with the camera. You can't get to the screws on the bottom for the camera mount. Take everything back apart, put those back on, put the screws in, reattach all the arms. It, it just caused a lot of, you know, rework, which is kind of frustrating. Um, it wasn't something I was used to building any of the other quads. They, they were just a lot simpler to get to the pieces. Um, in the end, though, it's done pretty well. It's been pretty sturdy for me. I've had a few hard crashes. Um, so far, nothing major is broken. Um, I had a prop that was bent back, but really that's been about it. So it's been pretty good. All right, so the real question is, how does it fly compared to my QAV 210 clone? So what was interesting for me is I definitely noticed the difference. Um, it flies well, the QAV 210 flies well, but the QAV 210 just seems a lot more maneuverable. Um, it feels better when I flip it and rolls and things like that. It just, it feels like you can do a little bit more for me. This feels a little bit more, you know, planted, a little bit heavier maybe, um, but not as acrobatic. Um, it still does flips and rolls, no problem. It's still a lot of fun doing those things, but it's just not the same tight feeling I get from the QAV 210. The biggest thing I noticed though is flying in windy days. Um, recently I was flying outside in about 40 mile per hour winds and I was amazed how well the QAV 210 handled it. Um, you know, when I went up, I would definitely notice that I was being pushed by the wind, but for the most part, I could fight it easily and almost forget about that wind. I then took this thing up there. This acted much more like a sail. It's got a bigger frame, a bigger body. If I went up and pitched myself down, the wind would just push it way more than I was used to it. So that's really where I noticed the biggest difference, but a nice calm day. The difference isn't that huge. Um, this is a lot of fun. I still have a ton of fun doing this. It flies really fast, just like the other one. Um, it's really a great quad. Um, at the end of the day, do I think I'm going to leave this built like this? You know, probably not. Um, I'll probably switch over to something different, try a different X frame, try to learn from that. But for now, it works great. I'm enjoying it. I'm having fun. I feel like I've had, you know, a history lesson, a $30 history lesson 
uh, which has really helped me understand better, you know, where the hobbies come from. So that's one of the things I really love with this hobby is I love to learn. I love to learn about the history of what others have done. I love to tinker and see the differences myself. So I've really enjoyed building this thing. I've loved seeing the difference between this and the QAV210. Um, I'm really glad I did this, but at the same time, I'm also looking forward to building something a little bit newer, a little bit better. So anyway, that's taking you through this quad. You know, some of my videos, you might see this showing up. Some of my, you might see the QAV210 and maybe we'll, be, maybe we'll be building something new in the near future. So thanks guys. I'll catch you next time.